SVC. I'm gonna take over the world with the guitar. Well, I roll with my guitar. So, you know, music of the day isn't quite what it used to be. A lot of my audio here did not come out as well as I had wanted. But I, as I put on, the, and there's the reason I put the words on the screen, you know, that you need a 230 Torx. But then I got to thinking about it and I, I thought, you know, I'll just narrate over the audio. Because, like I said, you would hear things like a guy next door mowing his lawn and everything else under the sun. So I was like, you know. I'll just do a narration. But basically, um, what we're doing here is uh, replacing our door lock actuator. Uh, you might need a screwdriver to get those tabs a little bit, but they're, they're those squeeze tabs. You squeeze and pull out the electrical connector. Um, the door is the same way. You know, I start on one end and I just start popping it off after I, of course, remove all the, the torque screws out of the handle and the, the door latch area. 
And behind here. There's a little, uh, th another little thumb tab that kind of snaps in. And then, uh, like a lead metal eyelet piece that comes out. If you look at it, you can figure it out. It's not not rocket science. It's just a door mechanism. Eventually, I get it out, and then I show you. Like I'm pulling out pictures of my kids and saying, "Look, look, look at my kids. Here they are." All right, I already do that with the dog. I'm not going to bring my kids into my videos. I don't even show my face. At least I try not to. I t you know, my whole reasoning behind that is because I didn't ever really want the videos to be just about me. And I, I kind of wanted them to be a little bit about me, but mostly about the car repair, you know. And then, uh, you know, once this starts making money, you know, I could, I could uh, afford better dentistry and then maybe I would I would show my face more at least that's my thought you know oh, yeah more t30 torques pretty sure they're the same size as the doors from what I can recall this HHR has been through a lot Now, I've had this door apart before, but I didn't take the panel all the way apart. We were doing, it's on the speaker video. If you go and look through my channel, you'll find how to replace your door speaker for cheap. And we take an aftermarket one and fit it into the original housing of the original speaker. But, yeah. Pretty good video if you want to check that out. I got this from a Cruise Chevrolet off of Rivers Avenue in North Charleston. I have since moved from that location, and I haven't revealed where I've moved to, but uh, more, more to the center of the country, still staying in the south, but I'm not quite ready to reveal that location yet. I don't know what I'm talking about here. I, I guess I was, you know, they, they have some videos out there about how that, that this can be uh, repaired but I'm basically just kind of looking at it and saying okay what what exactly is attached here what's not because if you, you don't want to take out these extra bolts and screws that might be holding your whole window um, you, you need the, the window rails or any of that in there so here I get, I'm uh, peeling back as carefully as I can the uh, insulation. And there's it's just got sticky stuff along there around the edges. Don't worry too much about you know re putting more adhesive back on there to reattach it. It's not that big of a deal. You can if you want to. You could probably use some like a uh, sticky two-sided 3M tape or something, you know. But you know, really, it's not that big of a deal. It'll kind of, you know, it'll stick back a little bit and and go back into place. You don't have to to fret about it. It's an HHR, people. Unless unless your car is a show car and it's that big of a deal to you, yeah, don't worry about it. There's like some some push uh, connectors here. <coughs> You might need to get like um, pliers of some sort or upholstery removal tool would probably work good here and uh, to disconnect that without doing damage. Yeah, I just use a screwdriver. But you still want to be careful no matter what you do. And the only reason you're taking this off is to make it easier to disconnect from the unit 
you might be able to get the, the unit out of there without actually popping that off now that I'm thinking about it. But, you know, do pay uh, close attention to how these rods and stuff are hooked up and connected. Because as you'll see by the, toward the end, I uh, start having a little bit of difficulty. Oh, here, I think I got good audio here. I guess so. Kind of like a snap connector that wraps around. Should be able to. Should be able to take a uh, screwdriver. And, uh, try to catch the top edge and work it around. Be able to get it by hand. Yeah, just it pull it lifts up. That one's out. What else is not out? Okay, the other rod. I think I was giving me trouble. I just want to see. People that have gone online say, oh, you could just lubricate this thing, just put some spray grease in it. I'm not going to, you know, I did the loft cylinder, did nothing. I'm not going to, I could do this, but I don't see. There's like no play, I don't get it. So I'm just going to end my woes, I'm just going to put the part in it. I'm not going to skip over the whole, spray it down. But some people on some videos say you can lubricate this. And if you want to try that, it's not too much work. I mean, but if you get stuck again, then you're going to have to pry your door open or something. Try to get that part. I just want to be done with it. Sometimes you just want to be done with it. Factory part generally <laughs> means you'll be done with it after that for a while. At least as many miles as it took to sell the first time, right? Anyway. Yeah. This. You kind of give it a little twisty twist. Instead of a J hook, it has an L hook. So pick up 
Can you park? I'm gonna put that booger right back in. Right back in. Yeah. Same with this one. And then we'll clack the, the other thing together. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it came with that cable. I'm remembering now. <laughs> but uh, then I'll tell you the other reason that I had went ahead and replaced that whole unit is uh, I don't know, you know, pay more attention to how you put it in because it took me forever to figure out how I had that hooked in there because I, I first put it on wrong and then and then had to put it on the right way so I'm taking this opportunity to talk to you more about things but yeah the reason I had originally uh, just went ahead and replaced this rather than try to do the repair that some other youtubers have uh, recommended like spray a bunch of lubricant and take it apart and do this and that um, Chevrolet had updated the part and some of the insides are different so like I said in the video I, I did not want to keep dealing with that you know it's being a problem so I just went ahead and bought the updated part now if you buy one aftermarket you might not be getting the, the updated changes so that's why I, I you know do recommend you get this from a Chevy dealer I know they call them the Steeler ships but yeah I fight with this thing a little bit I'm like uh, it, it kind of it's kind of a pain in the butt you know my my recommendation is to to get that uh the door lock stuff hooked up there's a couple one for the the uh key to turn and then there's one for the door I guess for the inside door handle to open and close and then you got the uh, rod one that comes down and you'll you're gonna snap that plastic piece last you know you want to get the whole thing in there and snap that last but uh it's not too hard I think I made it harder than it than it should have been <laughs> the other rod came off of the 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 key part which it's not too big of a deal if it does come off you can get it back on in there it's just you don't have a lot of space to work with and it's hard to see in there I ended up at some point just taking a break from it and coming back and then it started getting dark but you're gonna see that you know it, it ordinarily I would say this repair should not be ta shouldn't take you more than an hour at most really it probably would take a pro less than half an hour I don't consider myself a pro on these because to me a pro is somebody who works at Chevy and has replaced a hundred of these at that point you're a pro because you're good at it you, you've done that same door lock mechanism me I may have done a bunch of door lock mechanisms but I've done a whole bunch on different cars and some are easy and some aren't now if it takes you two or three hours don't beat yourself up about it if it's like the first one you've ever done in your life it's not a big deal you know if worse comes to worse you know make some more space get in there and look at it with your lighter or your phone or a flashlight or whatever it's not that big of a deal but yeah getting that if that hook comes off on you it, it does see that's where I took a break and <laughs> I come back I'm like oh crap now it's getting dark but yeah it's it's, it's 
it, it can be a little frustrating sometimes, you know, especially on these doors that have these odd shapes. Like the, these HHR doors have to have part of the front fender's hump coming out onto the door. It's, it's the weirdest thing. You'd think you'd have more spaces, bub the bu more bubbly the car, you should, you know, have more space to work in, you would think. But, uh, but that's not really the case. I think it's because the, uh, the way the, the window mechanism is in your way, too. You see, I'm taking it back out. I'm like, well, maybe I'll hook this first. I don't know if that helped or not. I think it did. Because it was like, well, once I get... Because you have side-to-side -side movement and up-and-down movement, but you don't have in-and-out movement. And in order to hook it back onto the mechanism, you need in-and-out movement. And I think that's why it came off, was because when I was taking it out, you know, it was... Uh, flexing around in that in that way so that's why I say it might come off on you just like it did on me I like uh, trying to keep things um, realistic in my videos like if I run into a problem I don't pretend like there was no problems and it was just that easy you'll you'll see that I actually talk a little bit about the problems I ran into myself because nobody's so professional I've never seen a me mechanic out there that's so professional and so great and awesome and perfect I've been doing this for over 30 years and I still make mistakes it happens I don't make as many <laughs> but you learn <laughs> you know but you're still going to make some mistakes and, and have hard times. You know, as I've noticed with uh, many older mechanics, you know, I don't want to say I'm an older mechanic now, but uh, those guys that are in their 20s, you know, they're, they don't know, they don't realize how good they have it, you know. And want you know that you have these mechanics that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, real old guys, man. They're just like, they're struggling. They know what to do. They know the stuff, and they just hate. They're they're not hating life, but they're they're you know, they're wishing they were 20 again, you know, and uh, I don't look forward to those days. But I don't ever see myself giving up on working on cars. You know, and obviously I've got the the rod hooked back in there, and what I'm doing is I'm getting these bolts started. I'm not going to tighten them all the way down, but I'm going to run them down as pretty good. And the reason being is because I want to make sure I got everything attached properly and everything's going to be working before I tighten these down. Oh, I'm not going to double check the rods. I'm just going to tighten them down. Okay. I'm using the battery powered impact, but it's not one of those. It's just one of those uh, quarter inch ones. I'm not putting the three quarter inch impact on it, you know. It's one of those little hex impacts. You can set them and everything, make them where they don't tighten too much. Or just don't pull the trigger so much. You can use you could use a one of those drills if you turn the uh screw setting down a little bit so that it'll click on you. I think what I was gonna do here was record some phone video for you. But I've uh but I dropped that phone and it I tried to recover the pictures, but anyway, I don't know what happened. I lost the I lost that particular video. I had this cool bright green phone case for it and everything. I really liked that phone. I don't remember what it was. It it was the top of the line Motorola phone. 
I don't know. I replaced it with a less top, less than top of the line one now. <laughs> because I was just like, man. I was I was due for an upgrade anyway. But I, uh, yeah, that was a, I, I still like that phone better than the one I have now. Nothing's really changed on phones. I mean, you go to the phone store now, and yeah, there's new models, but I mean, there's like spec-wise, they're not that much better anymore. You know, it used to be that you'd go back to the phone store, and you know, everything was like doubled and quadrupled in like size and memory and number of cameras were like you had, you had a bunch and everything was awesome you know now it's just all standard stuff for for most smartphones but yeah it looks like i've clipped the the plastic clip on now maybe you would like to get those screws tight for that part because you want to make sure that this is and, and the right adjustment and all that. There's not much to see here. Um, as far as putting the door back on, it's just, it's just the same as uh, pretty much the reverse of how I took it off. It's not that hard. Um, you want to make sure before you uh, make sure you plug everything into your window controls and all that for your door panel and put all that through and rehook up your door latch before snapping the door panel back on I have a, a weird habit of attaching the door handle but then forgetting to plug it up plug up the other stuff and I have to take the door panel back apart and plug things in well sometimes you don't have to go through all that but anyway here's some more Lola dog playing with time fun. Never gonna be able to sleep around this dog again. Alright, let's see if we can figure out what went wrong here. These are T15. Torque. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is the old one though. Now, a lot of people said, hey, you can just uh, loop, put, spray some lube in here and here and here and here and this thing here. And make sure you get this little thing here, you know. That's what the YouTube video is. Oh, and spray in here, too. You don't get inside of this thing. Anyway. Let's take it apart. Let's take it apart and see what we've we got here. What we got in here. Yeah. Oh, wrong way. Apparently I didn't have the right tool. Let's get these safety glasses on. A little durability test, it's called, you know? Uh, you, you need to know if you're going to put in that stuff, brand new door, right? Brand new door, right. You want to make sure it's a good one. So, 
You know, in order to test these properly, you want to get you a good dead blow hammer. You know, good safety glasses. You know, and, uh, you know, just test it out. Oh, you know what? I should have did that in slow motion. I forgot I have a camera that can kind of do slow motion. Or it cuts it down to like 25% speed or something. It would have been cool. But as you can see here, they're not very durable. They're not very durable. I don't know if I would advise getting one of these. I don't know if I can recommend this. Let's see if we can see what went wrong here. Well, this is the problem. Sir, I found what's wrong with your door lock. This was a customer. This is the problem, sir. It's broken. It's broken, sir. Let me see if I can get it to go back together. I'll try. Yeah, I don't think I can get this. I don't think I'm going to get this thing to work, sir. Oh, you know what? You're supposed to hit it over here. Someone went real <laughs> Yeah. So make sure you recycle, folks. This will go right into your recycling bin. And by doing this, you're removing the electronics, because most recycling bins don't allow electronics. 